Dorothy's Bornack is known for her sarcasm, comebacks, woes, and wicked stares. But she also has a really heartfelt Dorothy side and gives Sophia some of the best speeches of the entire show. That's why we're highlighting eight of Dorothy's Bornack's speeches that gives us all the feels. Dr. Bud? Yes. You probably don't remember me, but uh, you told me I wasn't sick. Do you remember? You told me I was just getting old. I'm sorry, I really don't remember. Maybe you're getting old. <laughs> That's a little joke. Well, I tell you, Dr. Bud, I really am sick. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. That is a real illness. You can check with the Center for Disease Control. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm glad. At least I know I have something. I'm sure. Well, nice seeing you. Not so fast. <laughs> there are some things I have to say. There are a lot of things that I have to say. Words can't express what I have to say. What I went through, what you put me through. I can't do this in a restaurant. Good. But I will. <laughs> Lois, who is this person? Look, miss, sit. I sat for you long enough. <laughs> Dr. Bud, I came to you sick. Sick and scared, and you dismissed me. You didn't have the answer, and instead of saying, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with you, you made me feel crazy, like, like I had made it all up. You dismissed me. You made me feel like a, a child, a, a fool a neurotic who was wasting your precious time. Is that, is that your caring profession? Is that healing? No one deserves that kind of treatment, Dr. Bud, no one. I suspect had I've been a man, I might have been taken a little bit more seriously and not told to go to a hairdresser. Look, I am not going to sit here anymore. Shut up, Lois. <laughs> I don't know where you doctors lose your humanity, but you lose it. You know, if all of you at the beginning of your careers could get very sick and very scared for a while, you'd probably learn more from that than anything else. You'd better start listening to your patients. They need to be heard. They need caring. They need compassion. They need attending to. You know, someday, Dr. Bud, you're going to be on the other side of the table. And as angry as I am, and as angry as I always will be, I still wish you a better doctor than you were to me. Oh, hello, Bernice. No, I'm alone. Well, what do you want? Yeah, sure, I'll sign him tomorrow. Okay. Bye. I'm alone? It's, it's going to take a while for everybody to get used to this. <laughs> so, what do you say? Will you marry me? I want to get my life together. I mean, I'm, I'm really no good being single. J just look around. Yeah. I am looking and listening, and I can't help but remember that um, I've been in the room before when your wife called and you said you were alone. Then you were cheating on her. With you? Yes, but... I've also been Bernice and had my husband call me, and he was always alone, too. You know, I was married to Stan Lee for 38 years, and for approximately 39 of those years, he cheated on me. I told a little lie yeah. because it's going to take her some time to get used to the idea of you and me. Yeah, well, I'm going to need a little time to get used to it, too. Look, I'm... I'm not saying you're a cheater. I'm not saying that, that you're like Stan. I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me that I'm, I'm not trusting enough, but uh, I'm going to need some time. So what are you telling me? It's going to be months or years or maybe never? Dorothy, if we were both 25, I could wait, but I need someone in my life now. Are you sure that you want to marry me, or, or are you just afraid to be alone? Who wants to be alone? Nobody. I don't. But if you're marrying me because I happen to be on the 
top of the list, then uh, maybe I shouldn't be on the list. So, I guess this is it, huh? I guess so. It seems like I'm always mad at my brother Phil. I was mad the day my parents brought him back from the hospital. <laughs> I thought he'd take their love away from me. And uh, instead, their love expanded, and we felt more like a family. I was mad at him when I was 10 and he was four, and we moved to a new neighborhood. I was mad because he always made new friends more easily than I did. And I'm mad today because I never wanted to give the eulogy at my kid brother's funeral. I'm mad because he died. He didn't have the wisdom to know that family members shouldn't allow themselves to grow apart. Because when this day comes, they can no longer tell each other how they care. If he'd had that wisdom, he could have shared it with me and I would have known the hundreds of memories I have of just the two of us eating ice cream on the stoop of our building or going through the drawers at Grandma's house or dressing up like the Bronte sisters. <laughs> How those memories fill me with joy. Why didn't you have that wisdom, Phil? Why didn't you give us a chance to tell you how much we loved you. What can I do for you? The first thing you can do is get rid of that ridiculous toupee. <laughs> I want to speak to the bald guy who left me. Ow! What's the matter with you? You walked out on me, Stanley's Bornack. Now I know why. You walked out on me and you didn't even have the decency to tell me you were leaving. I heard it from some lawyer over the telephone. A stranger, Stanley, a total stranger, told me that my marriage was over. Dorothy, look, things happened. Things happened. You're damn right things happened. 38 years happened. 38 years of sharing and, and crying and dreaming and fighting and loving and, and children and diapers and, and school plays and little league and worrying if you'd get through your gallbladder surgery and wondering if I'd get through another Sunday dinner at your mother's house. And the lean years when the business failed. And the good years. And the happy Christmases. All those things happened, Stanley, and because they happened, I deserve better than a stinking phone call from my husband's legal representative. You had a choice, Stanley, and you took the easy way out, and it was a rotten thing to do. But now you're here in front of me, and you can't run away, and I finally get to have what you tried to cheat me out of. I finally get to say goodbye, Stanley. Look, Dorothy, we... I said goodbye, Stanley. Hi, right, is Blanche ready? Uh, not quite yet. Would you uh, like to sit down? No, I'm in a hurry. No, nah, she'll only be a few minutes. Oh, great. Now we're going to run into traffic. I hate it when she does this. You evidently hate it when she does a lot of things. What? Nothing. I'm staying out of it. Good. Do you want to go light a fire under her? No, I don't think so. Why not? Because I think she's getting burned enough as it is. Look, would you just go tell Blanche to hurry up? I've got to teach this woman what being on time means. Wait a minute. I don't want you teaching her anything. You know, you're starting to get on my nerves. Oh, good, good, because you're already on mine. I don't like the way you're treating Blanche. Under all that makeup and sexy talk, there's a little girl there, and for some reason or other, she's letting you take advantage of her. I can't stop her from seeing you, but I'll be damned if I'm going to hurry her up. Who do you think you are? A friend. This is none of your business. Just I mean, butt out. You're hurting me. Stop that! Are you ready? I think you better go. Oh, look, look. I, uh, I'm sorry. Really, I, I'm sorry. Uh, look, sweetie, you know I don't mean these things I say. Just leave. 
If I walk out that door, I'm not coming back here again. That's a promise I'm going to see that you keep. Sweetheart, if you want to grab some dinner, we'll have to take separate cars. I'm going to have to leave for home right from the restaurant. Glenn, forget dinner. We need to talk. Um, things aren't working out anymore, and I don't know what to do to make them any better. Um, you can't leave your wife, and I'm not cut out to be the other woman. Dorothy, you know I love you. I know that, but it's not enough. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you either. That's why I came back. I thought you understood. I can't break up my marriage. Not now. Not at this stage of my life. If things didn't work out between you and me, I, I'd be alone. That kind of risk is fine when you're 40, but I couldn't do it today. I'm too old for that, Dorothy. Len, the risk shouldn't scare you at any age. And at any age, the loving would make it worthwhile. You... You want a safe, easy, comfortable home life and, and a romance and excitement on the side, and it's not for me. Dorothy, please think about what you're throwing away. If I stay, I am throwing away my future. Dorothy, I really want please, to... Please, Dennis, I just want you to listen. Yesterday, Kate came to me crying. She was more hurt than I had ever seen her before. Well, Dorothy, please, I please, I want you to understand what that does to a parent. Seeing your child hurt is worse than any pain you can possibly feel yourself. When they're little, you, you protect them from the bullies on the playground, and then later you suffer with them through acne and puppy love. And the first date, and the first time alone in a car, <laughs> finally they meet someone who will love them and take care of them, and they don't need you anymore. You're not too thrilled about that, but you get used to it. And then, then something happens, and you find out that there's still bullies on the playground, and all the old instincts come back, and that's what happened to me yesterday. I know you and Kate have made up, but I still have the same feelings. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I did a very stupid thing, and it can't be undone. But I'm going to do everything I can to make it up to Kate. I, I love her. A and, and I promise you that nothing like this will ever happen again. Good. Good. Because if it does, I will break every bone in your hand. <laughs> You'll spend the rest of your life selling newspapers out of a wagon. Keep it zipped, buddy. She's not kidding. Well. Well. Yeah. I guess this is it. Right. Listen. Dorothy, you don't have to say anything. I mean, what can you say about seven years of fights and laughter, secrets, cheesecake? <laughs> Just that uh, it's been very, um, well, it's been an experience that I'll always keep very close to my heart. And that these are memories that I'll wrap myself in when the world gets cold and I forget that there are people who are warm and loving and... We love you too. <laughs> Oh, I'll miss you. I'll miss you. Oh. Oh. you will always be a part of us. Oh. Your friendship was something I never expected at this point in my life, and I could never have asked for a better surprise. That's how we feel, too. I have to go. Dorothy, is this goodbye? I love you, always.
God, I love you so much. Oh, darling, darling. Lucas is waiting. Your angels. All of them. <laughs> You'll always be my sisters. Always. Thanks for checking out our Dorothy list. In the comments below, let us know which one of her speeches gave you the feels. Did we miss one that we should put in a future list? Let us know. As always, we thank you for commenting, chatting, hanging out with us, and loving the Golden Girls. Don't forget, stay golden out there.